So in this lesson, we'll have a look at coastal defences. Obviously, from our earlier lessons, you will understand that the coast is under constant attack from the sea through the processes of erosion. The syllabus asks you to look at several examples of hard and soft engineering. If you'd like to think about the difference between hard and soft engineering, hard is great big engineering projects that cost lots of money and probably involve lots of metal, concrete and wood. And quite often a good way of looking at them is that they are actually working against nature. In contrast, soft engineering doesn't. This type of engineering tries to work with nature rather than against it. But we'll see the differences between the two in a little bit more detail throughout this lesson. Of course, the one that we know a lot about already is groins, because we've already looked at these in longshore drift and in our example of Hastings. And the function of groins is to help to build up the beach uh, by slowing down longshore drift. And in this photograph, you can see the little zigzag shape that the uh, groins form. Um, if we look at it on this diagram, uh, the longshore drift is moving towards you from the top of the picture down towards the bottom to the end of this head or, or spit. Um, again, um, just pop back into Google Satellite Images and look at Hastings again so you can see a satellite image of that nice zigzag shape. One of the most popular ones uh, that you will see around are sea walls and this is a wall made out of uh, concrete, sometimes they are made out of wood. Um, that is to protect the land behind it. Um, you will notice that a lot of sea walls will have this curved shape. We call this a recurved sea wall and the function of that, as you can see in this photograph, is to get the uh, waves, wave energy to bounce back into the sea rather than being totally absorbed by the uh, sea wall itself. Um, sea walls do have many disadvantages. They are very expensive and they don't work forever. They don't last forever. Um, you will see here um, when you watch the video, um, there's a sea wall and it's in the UK and they built a railway track on top of it, but you can also use it for a promenade. Unfortunately, there was a big storm um, just a few months ago in 2014, which totally destroyed this sea wall. So have a look. This is a great video which shows the before and after. Um, so, sea walls. We will look at the prom we will look at the advantages and disadvantages of the sea wall in this PowerPoint. Um, but for the other types of coastal defence, you will need to go in and do the research yourself. And there's a nice video here of sea walls. Again, of course, along um, Hastings, uh, which is one of our favourite places, of course. Um, there you will see on the video the sea wall. There's the recurved seawall. You also see them jumping over groins so straight away you can see some problems that groins will occur. And the promenade, actually Hastings has two promenades. They have an underground promenade and they have here a promenade or walkway um, on, on, on top at street level. Um, watch the video, it's very modern. Um, next one um, here you can see um, some people sitting at the beach the bull does cause problems for people that want to use the beach. And also here you can see that there are problems. Quite often um, water behind the seawall can collect and push it down. Um, so we're going to talk about those more, a little bit more in class. Oops. Okay. Um, one of the ones that you may not know about are offshore reefs. Here you can see that they have appear to have built, built seawalls um, just off the coast. Um, in fact, do think of them as sea walls. Um, these are offshore reefs. Their function is to break up the walls, uh, break up the power of the waves before the waves even hit the coastline. Here in this diagram, you can see that they've got uh, the offshore reefs. Um, surfers will like these because they will help the um, large waves to form off coast. Um, watch this video. They are here building an after an uh, offshore reef. Here you can see in the video that they're building an offshore reef with a lot of uh, concrete tubes. 
The other one is rip wrap. If you have a look here, you can see that it's very large pieces of stone. Sometimes they're just pieces of stone. In this case, the stone are actually concrete blocks that are a special shape. Um, the rip wrap has the benefit here of being able to break up the energy of the waves. If you imagine a wave is coming in at this way, so rather than the wave hitting the seawall, just as one single wave, first of all, it hits the rip wrap. The rip wrap is designed in such a way that with each wave hit, it moves very, very slightly. And then, of course, you've got lots of nooks, cracks, crannies, and crevices there, and they will break up the force of the wave, so you're actually dividing uh, the force of the wave. Here again, um, you can see them assembling riprap um, as a form of coastal defence. Well, actually, in that video, it's not coastal defence, it's on a lake, but it's the same. Another one, here's an absolutely fantastic video, revetments. Um, they are a little bit like seawalls, but at an angle. And you can see, watch this great video, um, it's actually the world's most powerful vacuum cleaner or vacuum machine. Here you can see them placing revetments in place. Revetments can be made out of concrete as in the case of this video or as in the case of this picture they can be made out of wood. Beach replenishment. Um, we know already that beaches are very good at defending the coastline and um, possibly one of the best forms of natural defence defence that are out there. So sometimes what we can do is we can build the beach up artificially. Here, if you watch the video, you can see um, lots of machinery uh, dumping stones and pebbles to make the beach larger. Um, here, um, they haven't used uh, heavy vehicles. What they've done is instead they've pumped the shingle and stone um, as a mixture of water to build up the level of the beach. Moving on to some soft engineering methods, one of them is managed retreat. Watch, retreat. Watch this video. A managed retreat is uh, like sacrificing certain areas of the coastline and that's an example of really working with nature. So your task then is you need to be very, very clear about the advantages and disadvantages of hard and soft engineering. Um, some space here for you to make the notes. Don't fall into the trap of saying that hard engineering is bad and soft engineering is good. Um, better answers will actually say that it is the most appropriate method for that country, for its specific um, location, and of course the level of economic development that the country is in. So actually the best strategies use the most appropriate methods, be they hard or soft engineering, and along the coastline as a whole, along the stretch of the coastline, they'll use a variety of hard and soft engineering methods in combination uh, with each other. We'll be looking at that in a little bit more detail when we look at the Dorset example of managing a whole stretch of coastline. Of course, we've already talked about this managing the whole stretch of coastline when we looked at Hastings and the cliff collapse they have there. And when we looked at those cliffs collapsing, you said, very good question, why didn't they build uh, groins all the way along to protect the cliffs? Well, as we saw, if you trace yourself along, follow the coastline along to the east by 10 or 15 kilometres, you'll get to a nuclear power station, Dungeness Nuclear Power Station, and you will remember that it's a very, very good idea that we allow the longshore drift to reform itself to protect Dungeness Nuclear Power Station, because believe me, having nuclear power stations fall into the sea is really not a good idea. Okay, so your job now is to make some notes on the advantages and disadvantages of hard and soft engineering. Have a look in the blue book as well. They've got some quite good sections on there. And then next lesson, we'll look at this in a little bit more detail with the Dorset case study.